Hey everyone, Shane here. Let me tell you about my show coming up on November 24th, Saturday night over at Pops. We're calling it Riffs for Gifts. Me and my friend Lexi Schlimmer put this show together for uh, benefiting Toys for Tots. And we invited all along our friends Outrun the Fall, The Poor, Steeples, Monk and the People, um, The Matching Shoe, and Silent Hollow all performing live that evening on Saturday the 24th. Along with that, we'll have uh, some silent auction stuff. We'll have, uh, there's uh, there's rumors that Santa Claus might even be there. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and a whole lot more other things coming up. So get involved uh, with the show. You can find de- more details at popsrocks.com. And uh, come on out. It's a $10 donation at the door or five dollars with a toy donation so again all this benefiting toys for tots and it's going to be a great time so come on out saturday november 24th pops sauge illinois thanks everyone hi this is lexi sid of hess van schlemmer metalworks and art home of the schlemmer metal wolves we are a small but furious family run welding fabrication and metalworks shop with cnc capabilities and now full scale powder coating operation we bring unique affordable quality art to life within the realm of practicality whether it's signs sculptures railings, shelves furniture or even just powder coat for your rims or your patio set give us a look check us out on facebook or instagram or call 618-670-5724 we are hess van schlemmer metalworks that was terrible Allie tried hey everybody shane presley here with rock paper podcast let me tell you about my friends at naked vine Located at 1624 Clarkson Road in Chesterfield, Missouri, serving up all your favorite wine, whiskey, and local craft beers. Stop by and visit them for a drink and a show on Friday, November 23rd, Alligator Wine, playing all your favorite Grateful Dead tunes. And Saturday, November 24th, Circle the Wagons. I returned to Naked Vine on December 11th for my singer-songwriter storytelling showcase with... Langan Neubacher, Devin Cahill, Irene Allen, and Jeremy Essig. So check that out. Uh, 7 o'clock start, $5 at the door. Come on out. And uh, for all information, you can head over to NakedVine.net. Be sure to follow them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the show. Um, a podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the Internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> that's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. This is Gary Robert from Gary Robert and Community on Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock, 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 Gary Robert, welcome, man. It's been a uh, it's been a while, but thanks, Shane. I'm glad you're back. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me back. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think we did, looked. It was just over a year since we uh, first hung out on the show. Yeah, and time flies. Yeah, so <laughs> we're back here at my place, hanging out, talking. Uh, we got a brand new record coming out. Uh, I guess actually, technically available now everywhere, but we have a big release party coming up where uh, you can get yourself a copy there for sure. Yeah. And uh, all this, a lot of exciting things to catch up on since it's been over a year now. So, um, but let's uh, let's dive right into this record. And this is uh, "Isolation," uh, the new record from Garrett Robert in the community, uh, available everywhere digitally right now. And you can pick up CD copies and vinyl copies at the uh, record release party November thirtieth at the Heavy Anchor. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about this night, man. This is a uh, Okay. Big night, big uh, big release party. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, hope it's a good turnout and we can just have a good rocking time. And you, uh, you invite some friends along to play with you? Yeah, uh, Sunworm, they're playing, and then uh, Pirate Signal, they're also playing. So yeah, it should be a good show. Yeah, I love Pirate Signal. They're they're a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Good band. Uh, I've been following those guys around for a couple of years now, and yeah, they're. They're a lot of fun. Yeah, for stuff. sure. So we uh, we got the party over there, heavy anchor, and like I said, isolation uh, is the is the record, and uh, 
And you guys went, you guys went all out. You got the uh, the vinyl copies uh, with this record also, which uh, I think is awesome. Uh, I'm a big, Tony, you, as you brought a copy in today, I, uh, but I'm a big vinyl enthusiast myself. I uh, enjoy trying to purchase whatever I can on vinyl, and it does uh, seem to be making quite the resurgence. Um, you know, obviously over the last couple of years, like uh, the vinyl sales have been up big time, and most of the uh, artists I support all seem to enjoy putting their records on vinyl as well so uh it's been fun to like i said buying a bunch of new records yeah it's and uh, it really does sound i think it sounds a lot better on vinyl it just uh i don't know it just has a better sound quality I... sure well it's uh and there it, it's an experience i think that's what's the fun part about True. it uh, you know it's like with so much with uh, Spotify and even with CDs and things, people get so much into the you know skipping tracks and different stuff like that, or picking certain favorites and and it's nice with a, a vinyl though you can drop the needle you know in the middle, but it's kind of it's nice where you can kind of put it on and sit back and listen to the whole record as a, you know as a, a piece of artwork like it is you know like as from beginning to end so. Yeah, that's really important for uh, for me. Just you know, have, listen to the whole record in sequence, mm -hmm. and um, then you you know you play the A, then you got to turn it over, right. and, which is always fun. So. Sure, and I've always been a big fan too. Like uh, you know, the artwork and things too that goes into all of it, and especially seeing it as, as a blown up picture on that vinyl sleeve, and some of the different inserts and different things that they are that you get in the vinyl packaging compared to squeezing it into a, into a CD format and stuff so uh, so I've always been a big fan of that like just again the big pit, the big pictures and uh, the liner notes and all the uh, lyrics in there and different things that all kind of come with that like it's always fun to me to see what all is included yeah it's really cool you know it's you got you a big piece of art here and you just you look at it and turn it around you know it's kind of cool it is uh, it's wild some of the stuff that they do I've seen uh, some some pretty crazy things. I know, like, Jack White did, uh... He had, like, a uh, super ultra deluxe version of his last record, and where there was, like, all kinds of different things. Like, if you if you played the... If you, like, dropped the needle on the uh, the inside of the record there, like, it would have... It had a song in there, and then, like, if you played it at, like, a certain... You could play it at like three different speeds and have different songs, and then you could. There was like another thing where you, uh, I forget how you did it, but like, it, there was like a little angel would appear. Like it was something. There was like a some kind of a thing etched in the grooves, and like when it's when it spins, like it would look up. It would appear that an angel, like a you know, like a three D figure kind of thing, popped up. Like it was. Wow, that's, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how. Like, I mean, that's the thing. It's like it's crazy. Like to think of like who thinks of this stuff. But like, it was really neat. But like, it's again, that's you know, that's exclusive to a vinyl record. You don't get that kind of experience with a CD and different things. So, um, but even that, even the CDs are kind of going out. Like you know, everybody's like I said, everybody's going digital today. But uh, I think a lot of you know true uh, music fans still enjoy purchasing a physical copy and so i know i do i mean even if it's a whatever it is i enjoy taking a copy home with me that night and and not just always having it digitally and stuff it isn't it is convenient to have that the spotify and itunes and all that in your pocket but it's uh it is nice to have those physical copies uh also yeah you got something to look at you know it sure makes it a little bit more interesting yeah man so we uh what uh what was the was that just the you guys all talked it over and like we'd love to have this record on vinyl that was i mean you guys i guess grew up being big fans of vinyl and stuff too and yeah i did a, a vinyl record in the 80s and uh so we were just talking about yeah it'd be fun to you know to do a to do vinyl this time and uh you know so we just did it yeah you said it was uh quite the process though right like a like a it, takes, it was some waiting time yeah. to, for the manufacturing and it's a uh, and they get your, you know, they got to go through a bigger, longer process mm -hmm. to make the vinyl than they would like a CD. That CD is really available, you know, real quick. Yeah. Well, I think, that, and I'm again, that probably goes back to the fact that there's such a resurgence where so many people are doing vinyl. That I think like it's got a lot of the uh, manufacturers backed up quite a bit. You know, like mm -hmm. since there's there's not as many, you know, 
uh, vinyl pressing plants around anymore. So yeah, I, I think they're really backed up. There's really been a resurgence, and uh, so yeah, it's they're back in business. Again. Yeah, <laughs> right. You uh, let's uh, let's give them a little sneak peek of what you've been up to. This is a uh, we're gonna share some brand new songs off of Isolation for you today, and uh, let's start with this title track, Isolation, and uh, anything you want to add around this tune? Is there uh, anything come to mind? Um, this is the uh, the song we did the uh, video for, um, so it's it's going to be cool. We uh, uh, video uh, video grafted in the snow we had, and uh, it's in this old Gothic uh, cemetery. Some parts of it, and uh, so yeah, it, it was fun. So hope hope everybody likes it. Uh, you said you filmed it back home uh, in, in Cape area? In Cape, yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Um, yeah, man, I'm excited to see it. I uh, Do you know, I guess, uh, 
We don't have a date yet for uh, a release for that, or well, hopefully it'll be out before uh, our record uh, release show. So you know, we can I can do some promoting on that. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm. Uh, I think that's fun too. Like again, uh, the the I don't know. I, I obviously we're we're long gone of the days of uh, MTV and all that fun stuff. Whenever music videos were at uh, the the height of popularity and stuff but uh i still love a good music video and i still love that so many of my friends are are doing uh you know getting creative with them still and and making fun fun videos to go with their songs and um i got we have a lot of friends around st louis area that are doing um uh, are you know actually uh videographers and making great videos and it's just right. it's just fun to see people like again getting creative with it and and doing something fun like, yeah, definitely. We didn't want to go full blast uh, conceptual uh, video. We kept it abstract. It's going to be in black and white, and just uh, you know, it's going to it's based mostly around uh, the writing, the music, and uh, the performance. Mm-hmm. And so you, some dark, you know, some night shots and things sure. like that, dark alleys and, right. and stuff like that. Yeah, it sounds it sounds pretty. Uh, sounds a little dark. Uh, you said cemetery too, and all that. So, cemetery, yeah. yeah. So. Um, well, that'd be cool though. I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. And uh, did you guys uh, play live too during it? Like, or is this uh, you, you played along with the? Uh, we uh, we we while we did, we just we uh, did a, like a lip syncing okay. to the to the song. Right. Uh, we just got a space and we played you know along to the sure to the uh, song, and then we just synced it up with the with the video. Yeah. Well, keep an eye out for that. I guess. Uh, is there an uh, official uh, Gary Robert in the Community YouTube page or? Uh? Uh, there, it's uh, it'll be also on our website, Gary Robert in the Community, and um, yeah, there uh, it will be on YouTube also. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, uh, and then uh, we got the Facebook page as well. You can uh, get, yeah, exactly. get, get involved uh, on there as well. Uh, well. Along with the so we got the again, come on out to. Heavy Anchor here in St. Louis, Missouri on November 30th and pick your, up your copy of Isolation uh, on uh, CD, vinyl, or you can head on out right now to uh, iTunes and Bandcamp and Amazon and all that and you can download it uh, digitally if you uh, prefer that route. So, um, we do have another big date in St. Louis coming up uh, closer to the end of the year on uh, December 21st. You guys will be at the haunt right we're going to uh, uh, play at the haunt and we are supporting uh, this punk band from uh, Indiana misunderstood and so yeah it should be a good time yeah is that uh, you ever you ever played with them before never have yeah I know uh, I'm not sure I don't know uh, anything about misunderstood but uh, yeah, they do a lot of touring yeah. and yeah I'm always up for some uh, Hearing some new tunes though. Yeah, they're a punk rock band, and uh, yeah, they 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 rock. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, I, I actually I don't think I've ever actually been over there to the haunt yet either. So I need to. It's really cool. It's a great atmosphere, and it's a really cool place to play. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's really friendly. It's a uh, no smoking, and it's a. Uh, just a, you know, like I said, friendly and uh, just a great atmosphere. Amen, man. You, um, with this new record, are you guys, uh, you know, speaking of them touring through, are you guys looking to do some more touring yourselves or? Uh... Um, we probably won't. Do, we may do some mini tours, but basically in playing St. Louis mm-hmm. and uh, Nashville and playing Memphis. Right. And there's a starting to be a, a pretty lively music scene in Cape right now too with the bands doing original music and so it's things are looking getting pretty cool yeah well you mentioned uh, earlier that the, uh, you, you received a little praise from um, a New York magazine um, what was uh, what was it called uh, uh, the magazine is called Carpazine, Carpazine they have yeah. an article in there about us and you know, some pictures and stuff so yeah. Even, well, we do. We've got a little insert in the cover too, so that, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, maybe uh, maybe that might spark something. Maybe you can get up to New York and. We are basically more of a New York type band. Right. We uh, like a lot of the New York artists from like the '80s, early '80s, and late '70s. You know, I never. Uh, I don't think we talked about it last time, but 
I watched this uh, documentary on Netflix uh, about uh, Twisted Sister mm-hmm. coming up uh, through the, all that uh, New York music scene. And uh, it's called We Are Twisted Fucking Sister. And it was uh, it was pretty interesting. Like, because I don't know a lot about that, you know, that time and that, that music scene and stuff. But, like, it was really interesting to, to kind of see what they went through and, you know, just trying to trying to get trying to book gigs and and hustle and stuff and like and all the going through all the crazy you know hair and makeup and everything that they were doing and stuff too but yeah. uh you know it, it was just uh it was cool just to kind of get in get a little insight into that world of uh that 70s and uh early 80s yeah yeah the uh, rock clones and you know richard hill and the boy died and uh there's so many great New York bands, uh, New York Dolls, Lou Reed. Yeah, yeah, they and uh, so I, yeah. If you haven't checked that out, I would uh, encourage anybody listening to go find that documentary. Like I said, it was uh, some cool stuff in there. Yeah, uh, and I, I don't know. That's I feel like that's you know obviously Twisted Sister was a, became a huge success, uh, but what was what was neat is like it wasn't. It wasn't that way always for them, you know. Like they, they really had to work hard to get where they were, and they had a lot of times where they almost gave up and all this different stuff. So like it was a lot of I could relate to, and especially I think many bands can relate to. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah. You know, people just kind of assume they were, they started out and they were huge, and they, you know, they were that with like persistence. Yeah, That's the sure. Yeah, it took a long time to get to where they. And a lot of and a lot of deals fell through that they were you know different things they thought they were going to have opportunities and that you know that falls through and you you keep going till you find the next one and stuff so that's right just keep on going and yep so but yeah it was uh it, like I said it meant it was motivational you know it was at the same time like for me like I could relate a lot to it there's a lot of things that go on for me in my personal life and with this show and stuff and like where you you get down and you're like wondering why you keep doing and then and then you get those little moments where all everything goes right and you're like oh, okay now now it makes sense yeah, like it's uh, fun again right yeah <laughs> so but uh you keep riding that man so uh let's uh let's drop in one another tune there for everybody uh this uh let's go uh sorry is it celestine Celestina, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, is there anything you need to tell them about Celestine? Well, Celestine, um, you can, you know, it's open. You can, it's uh, got different meanings or interpretations. It could either be like a murder, song about murder, or it could be suicide, or maybe it could be assisted suicide, uh, or I don't know, I guess there's other things it could be too, but, you know, everybody can kind of decide listen to what really happened and just, you know, use your imagination. Yeah.
Was that, uh, where did you guys end up re recording this one at? Uh, we recorded at uh, Farbrand. That's where we did the last one. Yeah, uh, that's, that's here in St. Louis, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Brian Sheffer, he was the engineer. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I've had some friends go all over there, and they all, uh, I don't know if, if they recorded with Brian, but they uh, but they all rave about it. They all had a really, really good experience, and, and a lot of great music's come, been coming out of there. So Yeah, yeah, it's a great studio over there. Doing some good stuff, so. Shout out to Firebrand here in St. Louis. Thank you. Um, yeah, that uh, what uh, was that a uh, you guys have something I mean, knocked out pretty quick, or did you got the uh, most of the songs were like uh, probably no more than three takes. Some of them, maybe a few, were like first takes, and uh, we there we well rehearse the songs before we go in there, and we know exactly what we want, mm -hmm. and we just go in there and do it. Did they, were they able to uh, kind of help you uh, push these songs a uh, certain direction sometimes, or would you guys pretty much pretty much stick to what you guys had already in the original plan and stuff? Yeah, well, like we have a, you know a real good idea what we want, and uh, but uh, yeah, Brian can uh, really you know he he's kind of he knows what we're what we're hearing because we've recorded there quite sure. a bit. And uh, yeah, he doesn't try to, you know, like, take you away from what you're really wanting to do. He just, if he's got ideas or something, you know, he, he'll say it, mm -hmm. which works out really good. I just enjoy that process of like kind of, uh, you know, again as a music fan, kind of hearing the uh, demo version that the, you know, the original scratch recordings of like what the idea was, and then like, and then hearing that compared to what the final product is on the record and like how. Sometimes it's a, you know, drastic difference, you know, like you can kind of hear the initial ideas of what was there and then like sometimes they completely take a turn whenever it goes in the studio. They, you know, change the, you know, the uh, the tempo and the melodies and different, you know, some whatever it might be. And, and it's just fun to kind of track that whole process and stuff for me. Yeah, it's a, uh, it is interesting. Um, we uh, have a, you know, basic idea of what we what we're wanting to do, right. and and, uh, and uh, we just kind of uh, you know, if there's something that kind of hits us, we may just we reflect, remain flexible, so we can just kind of maybe go with something if we decide to add something. But uh, we try to keep it simple and uh, not overdo it with the overdubs, and just you know try to keep it you know pretty fairly simple. Right. Yeah, man. That's what it. Is. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we uh, I kind of want to get to know a little bit more about Gary and uh, what uh, we we are coming up on uh, the holidays and stuff. Uh, Thanksgiving's uh, next week and things as we're recording this. Uh, you, do you uh, do you guys do uh, anything? Any uh, big family traditions or anything for the holidays or? Uh, not a whole lot for uh, for the for Thanksgiving. Just you know, small get-togethers and stuff like that. Yeah. And Christmas is a little bit bigger, you know, family and stuff like that. But. Sure. Do you have a particular uh, favorite dish for Thanksgiving? Um, well, I'm vegetarian, and then uh, I, you know, so it, it's a, I like to be surprised, actually, yeah. yeah. I'm a mashed potatoes guy myself. I, yeah, uh, I can, yeah, that's good, I, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll destroy some mashed potatoes on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Um I was uh I was dating a, a girl once and Thanksgiving's always been a big big thing around my house like a big family function especially when my my grandparents were still around like we would all 
my whole family we would go to grandma and grandpa's and we would you know just it was always a fun dinner uh you know and football all day and just hanging out with my cousins and stuff and and uh but anyway, i went uh when i was dating uh my ex uh at the time and uh we went to her family's and her mom um made some instant mashed potatoes and uh i was like you know i'm all I'm, instant mashed potatoes are fine for like you know any any other time but for me i felt like for thanksgiving we gotta you gotta do it right you gotta you gotta do you know you gotta go all out and stuff and one time a year let's let's do it right and yeah for sure so yeah. just fill up yep <laughs> so i uh anyway it was like uh so it's always been a big thing to me like even if it takes forever peeling all the mesh all the taters and all that different stuff like it's always it's worth it because yeah. it's all gonna pay off and it's gonna be delicious yeah definitely so. it's a big difference yeah <laughs> i uh uh do you have a are you a pumpkin pie you do you do any of that pumpkin pie yeah that's yeah that's some good stuff yeah, yeah. i can i can handle that what do you so what do you do on, uh so, as a vegetarian do you get like uh do you do like the uh do you have some kind of substitute for your turkey then or do you uh not really uh we just kind of forget about turkey okay. and, <laughs> and uh just try to fix or eat something that's just a you know like mashed potatoes maybe sure. maybe some like a vegetarian like dressing you know and maybe green beans and stuff like that right yeah i uh yeah i don't know if i could do that man i uh i, I love i love some turkey and and ham and all that it's uh I don't know, it's, it's all it's all good to me uh, but I, uh, I can get it though uh, what about for uh getting into christmas do you get you uh get you say good things get a little bit bigger uh, with the get the family and up together and everything yeah we invite the uh the family together um you know kids and and their kids yeah. and stuff like that They're, yeah we um I don't like again. It's like I say, things are used to be a lot better or a lot different. I guess when my grandparents were around and things like. Mm -hmm. Same you know, here, yeah. And now my my uh, my family's kind of we we my I have like several cousins, and all my cousins have lots of babies. So all the uh, you know smaller families have gotten too big to where it's hard to even get the whole family in one house together, kind of thing. So yeah. it's like. Everybody started doing all their individual, you know, uh, festivities. So, so kind of a bummer. You know, it's not not the same as what it was when I was younger when uh, we could all get together and things. And uh, but yeah, after my parents died, you know, things kind of changed. You know, it's uh, like kind of like you say, you know, just smaller smaller sure. groups and things like that. Yeah, well, we still have a good time. My my um, my my mom's side of the family, they still get together quite a bit. Like. But my my dad's side, like I said, there's so many of us. It's hard to even. We'd have to get like a banquet hall or something <laughs> to get everybody in it together. So, yeah, there's like a, on my dad's side, there's a, there was a, ten boys and one girl, well, and then on my mom's side, there was like a, I think eight girls and two boys. So yeah, it was, that's it was a, lot of yeah. a lot of festivities when I was little. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. <laughs> I got festive doubt, really. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You uh, I forget if we talked about it again too. But did you uh, did you grow up in the area, the in the Cape and all the? You, it was around the Cape area. Yeah. It was a small town, Kelso. Yeah, it's about ten miles south of Cape. So you've always been uh, been around that area then. Uh, we for the most part? we lived in uh, we moved to uh, L.A. We lived there about oh, eight, yeah. eight years. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that was in the um, early eighties, and uh, so we was right there in the, with the punk scene and everything. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And so it's, um, what do you think of, uh, today's, uh, punk scene? We got, we still got a pretty good thing going here in St. Louis. I feel like, uh, we have, uh, a lot of diversity in our music. Um, we, you know, we, we have a little, a little bit of everything here in St. Louis. There's, uh, but there's, uh, there's definitely little pockets, uh, where for, for everybody, you know, it's like we have, uh, we have kind of our, our jam scene and our, uh you know rock scene and different things and we even got a little bit of country splashed in there and different stuff and folk singer songwriter stuff and all that but uh the, there's a lot of like pop punk bands right and uh yeah variety yeah. yeah you uh do you get to uh 
get around to seeing a lot of these bands play much? I mean, or besides getting to play, you know, shows with them and stuff? Well, being, you know, living in Cape, it's, uh, you know, we come up, we play in St. Louis quite a bit, so just coming up to play is, you know, brought, you know, a lot of driving. So, sure. yeah, that's, uh, we, we do try to get up every now and then to see, see bands. Yeah. Is it, do you get, uh, do you get to ever get to share any advice with them at all, like, or anything, like, kind of? Uh, I'd probably, I don't even give advice. Yeah, don't <laughs> no, know. no, I could probably use some, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, unless somebody asks, you know, I'm if I sure. could, if I could help somebody out, if they, if, they got, if they might know something they might find useful, yeah, why not, yeah. Has there been, was there anything ever said to you that uh, really, really uh, resonated that, Helped uh, helped you out in a time of need for some advice and stuff. Um, Anything well, mind? there was there was some inspirational. It was kind of it was kind of funny. This one gig, we, one gig we played. Yeah, this guy said, "Yeah, man, that guy's my hero. He's being that old and, and doing that, still doing that kind of stuff. Man, I love. It. He's my hero." I thought, okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, is that a compliment or what? Right. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, I don't know, man. You look. There's all kinds of. Uh, you look at like a guy like uh, Paul McCartney is still out there touring and doing, you know, and playing these Beatles songs still, and uh, and you know, Mick, Iggy's doing a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah, I'm Mick, still. Mick Jagger still gets out there and shakes it all night. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, like so. He, you know, they. Uh, I think. I think it's the same. Like, you know, it's age is nothing really to, for me like I feel like it's you're only as old as you as you uh, want to be you know like all those guys like you can get out there and keep keep playing these music and keep you keeps you young and stuff like uh, I remember growing up and also you know, it's a little different but like uh, my friend uh, had his dad was much older than a lot of the other dads and uh, but he would always be out playing basketball with him like you know all the time mm-hmm and you know either he could have been inside saying oh i'm too old to be doing all that or he could stay out there and keep exercising with him and keep playing basketball and keeps him active and in shape and he so he doesn't feel like he's an old man and he you know so yeah it's the same just thing. like peter hook and you know in the light he's with, with uh, joy division and they're still out there playing like echo and the bunny man they do right psychedelic furs so yeah, a lot of the old punk bands are still playing Social yeah. Distortion. Oh yeah, yeah, they were just here uh, a couple months ago or something. Uh, yeah. Come through town. I agnostic front. I mean, there's so many bands. They just if you love it, why quit? Right. Know? Sure. I. Uh, it is funny to see some of the guys, some of the old rockers, like kind of go the uh, the the route of like uh, slowing it down and making it like a country oh, band yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Now I've seen that a lot too. Like just you know they. They uh they can't play quite as fast as they once did and stuff like that so they have to slow everything down a little bit and yeah that would suck <laughs> if they get if I get to that point I'll just hang it up <laughs> <laughs> but yeah some of those uh, I mean like again that's uh that's a lot you know when you're uh some of those bands like you just you physically can't your hands can't do it anymore some of those guys just like shred like crazy and stuff oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah like, I can I can see that yeah, yeah so when you're uh you know but. Yeah, I agree. If it's if it's not fun anymore, and uh, you know, and all that, like, you, yeah, maybe it's time to time to hang it up. But yeah, it's find still, something else to amuse yourself. Right, it's still fun. Yeah. Uh, again, we got a uh, we got this big release party on uh, uh, November thirtieth at uh, Heavy Anchor, and let's uh, share one more with them from this uh, new record, Isolation. This song is called "Calm Before the Scream." And uh, I told you, this is probably my favorite. It was, uh, uh, I liked, well, one is a, is a little bit more upbeat than uh, some of the other stuff that I've heard so far. Uh, but I also, there was like some cool uh, guitar effect stuff, and especially like at the end, like uh, it was just, I don't know, the sound of, it was cool, it was fun. Like, uh,
So this, uh, anything you, anything else you want to add around uh, this one? It's a, it's a positive song. Just like uh, you know, just uh, just keep on trying. You know, just uh, it's uh, every day is another day. Just keep on trying. Yeah, yeah, man. That uh, and I liked uh, the name too. Calm, calm before the scream. I said we've all heard. Uh, uh, the calm before the storm. Right. Uh, That's your little take on it, though. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, it's uh, so check that out again. Uh, available digitally everywhere. Uh, come to the party and pick up uh, vinyl and uh, CD copies of this uh, new record. And uh, we we got uh, some other merch at the table too. For there will be T-shirts and we do have stickers. Yeah. And some past CDs from other releases. Is, uh, is, is uh, the shirts uh, for the, the new record, or do you have a... Actually, uh, they're all black, and they have uh, the Gary Roper and community across the front, and just real simple, clean cut. Yeah, man. I, um, yeah, man, I have to, you got any big boy sizes for... Um, I think, I, you know, I don't know if we have... Uh, I think we... Well, wait a minute. I, we did a medium, large, and extra large. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know if that I might have to put a couple together, but stretch it. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. Yeah. laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I, I, I uh, let's give me one of those and show my support. Um, again, uh, come on out to these shows, uh, and then after uh, going in December, like I said, twenty first at the Haunt. Uh, so if you can't make the release party, you can come out there and pick up a copy that night as well. So, um, but we got a lot of things happening. You can get involved with all things. Gary Robert in the community on Gary Robert in the community dot com and Facebook and uh, and like to keep an eye out for that isolation video coming soon. Uh, but yeah, you uh, you got anything big uh, plans for twenty nineteen that you're looking for? Is there anything uh, you thinking about already? You said you guys are kind of yeah, I am um, already writing songs and. Uh we're going to uh, be during that time. We're going to um, hash the songs out, decide which ones we're going to, you know, put together for the next go around. And uh, yeah, just basically work on songs and get ready to record. Yeah. Is, do you uh, when you when you go and like when you're writing that in that process and everything? Do like is there certain things that kind of uh, spark a song, or is it just kind of is it, you never know when it's going to ha- happen. Well, what I, I I try different things on guitar until there's something I like, and then I sing along to it, and then uh, I make up lyrics to fit the mood of the song, and then I decide on the arrangement, and um, just pretty much whatever catches my ear. Yeah, and just kind of go with that. So you usually start starts with the guitar part first, and then usually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just I don't know. Again, another part of the process that fascinates me. It's like some people, you know, start with lyrics and build around that, and then you know, or the other way and stuff. So there's certain lines that uh, you know, there's certain lines that pop up in my head. I'll just I'll write it down, and uh, you know, sometimes they're like, and then it's like I go through the, my notebook and I see these different maybe like two or three words I may have here, and then you know later on another day I might have that. And then they just kind of connect. They just kind of like they, they seep out of the brain, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. at different times, you know, just a little bit at a time, just to, don't want to overwork the brain, I guess. Yeah. Do you ever uh, do you ever have, like, an idea and then it sits and then you kind of come back and revisit it and then it all kind of clicks and stuff too? Like, you'll, you'll revisit, revisit old notebooks or anything that you wrote lyrics down in? Or? Sometime. Yeah. But usually it's new stuff, um, but, yeah, it's... Usually I go through the notebooks several times, and at some point I say, "Well, that's that's all I'm going to get out of that." Right. And just to start with a new one. Yeah. You uh, you care talking about your uh, tattoos? I know you got a uh, quite a bit there on your arm. Oh uh, yeah, they're just uh, just different different things. Yeah. You know, just nothing. Just something I, I thought it would be you know interesting to have. Right. And they're kind of addicting too. Sure. And once you do one. And then it's like, well, it looks incomplete. And you got to, you know, until you finally get down to your wrist. And, then, <laughs> and you say, well, okay, I'm going to stop there, you know. And <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's always been on another thing. I, I, I just enjoy the uh, the artwork of it all. Like, you know, again, it's, uh, it's 
there's some pretty we, I've been digging some of these uh, like Ink Master and some of the tattoo mm-hmm. shows and stuff like that but it's a uh, it's a pretty fascinating world like uh, getting into tattooing and all that and, so, and some of the Again, some people, you know, some of them don't mean as much, but, like, some of the stories behind some of the tattoos and different things and all the, uh, um, you know, the whole process of it all. So, I, I St- Stacy's uh, actually in the middle. My wife's in the middle of a uh, half sleeve, and oh, it's cool. all uh, it's all Jurassic Park themed. So, she's got a big uh, big uh, thing on her arm with the, the gate and all, and the Jeep and all that stuff, and she's and some big T-Rex and stuff on there. And so... It's definitely a good idea to plan everything out before you start, but, you know, it's like, uh, you know, because sometimes it will come together, but, you know, it's, it's best to plan it all out ahead of time. I went to North Carolina once with my buddy, uh, he was he's stationed down there for military stuff, and uh, goes get and got some tattoos while he was in the service down there, and then he uh, came back home, and he wanted to go back down there and finish up... Uh, some of his sleeve and he's, uh, so he did, the, he had his uh, shoulder to f- uh, elbow complete and then he did his elbow to his wrist in one session, like eight hours or something like that, mm-hmm. uh, whatever it was. We, he laid there on the table for quite a while, so like he's getting tattooed and I went and started walking around and down there and went to a record store and tried to kill some time and stuff and just, just waiting for him and but I was like, man, that's, that's got to be uh it's pretty brutal laying there for eight yeah. hours getting tattooed and stuff. And but uh, after about four hours, you start getting uh, I yeah. just want this to be over. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, I don't think I could do it though. I know I've never, never, you know, we have, I don't have any tattoos or anything. Like it's like I said, I think it's pretty, pretty cool. But uh, there's just been nothing, uh, nothing that is permanent enough I guess to want to put on my body yet like there's yeah. you know there's certain things I think about it sometimes there's certain things that I but I just uh, n- nothing's really sh- struck me like I need to put that on my body yet but uh, I don't know one of these days though I'm good cover ups you yeah. know you can always do that yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> I had a few of those alright you uh cover ups yeah you just yeah. get some some tattoo didn't turn out the way you wanted. Uh, you kind of maybe change your mind, and maybe that isn't exactly what you wanted. Then they, you know, they have to come up with a creative way to camouflage. Sure. And yeah, that there's a lot of, that, that is cool too. To like to the to, just to see the that whole process and how that's because like uh, it's you know it's a lot more to it than just putting some more ink on top. Like you have to actually draw. The design to kind of cover up the lines, the lines uh, make it all blend together to where it looks like it was never there. So right, it's right. Uh, my friend Robbie and, and Dave up there and and Troy, they do have a shop called the Ink Spot and like and they post a lot of their pictures and a lot of them are cover ups and it's like it's it's really cool to see them take like some old faded piece of work that you know they the people weren't happy with anymore and make it you know give it new life and and make them you know make the customer smile again and stuff so yeah really it's it's nothing like a good fresh tattoo that looks good all right yeah man so you uh you think you're done or you think you uh you're gonna still keep going i think i'm done yeah I, yeah toss i don't think there's there really there isn't no more room man. <laughs> all right <laughs> well you can uh you can be like all the the rappers today they all got the face tattoos and everything all over there like yeah a- <laughs> I think, yeah i think i'll buy bypass that one. yeah i don't blame you don't, don't. <laughs> yeah it's a little too much right yeah i don't get how the, that's uh that's dedication there man like it it's, yeah uh, for I sure i don't know how those guys do that but yep yeah. uh anyway but uh pick up this record uh again check it all out uh online on spotify you can stream the whole thing today and come on out to these shows and take one home with you but uh Thanks a lot, Gary. I really appreciate you doing this, man. It's been fun getting to getting to hang out and chat again and uh, catch up. So, yeah, thank you, Shane. Good to good to see you, and thanks a lot. Yeah, man. Hopefully, uh, like I said, hopefully we'll get a, sell a whole bunch of these and uh, get everybody checking out that video too for when that's out, and uh, we'll be sure to share it along when it, when I find it once cool. uh, once the link's up there. So sounds cool. Yeah, man. Well, thanks, buddy, and uh, hopefully we'll do this again soon. For sure. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, man. I'll see you, Gary. All right. See you, Shane.
Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.